This is unashamedly practical. Um, it's very simply about implementing the 2008 NICE guidelines. And it's actually not about trying to save money. It's not about trying to save the NHS. It's because the 2008 guidelines are good, are good practice. It's good general practice. Our patients were not actually being delivered good care to them because we were not following them. So this is very much about good evidence-based practice. I would love to be able to say that at Churchill Medical Centre, which incidentally has 16,000 patients, 14 salary GPs, uh, eight, eight nurses, so large team, eminent, sorry, fa fabulous opportunity there for everybody doing something completely different unless we're actually saying something consistent. I'd love to be able to call this doing groundbreaking stuff that no one's ever done before, but in fact, this is implementing evidence that's actually half a century old. Everything that we're talking about today was actually said back in 1965. There's some, some little refinements. 1965, this is the paper that really started. This was actually based in hospital as well, saying don't use antibiotics because they don't work. It was saying it at that point, back in 1965. So we, we decided we were going to look at, at the practice, we we're going to be looking at, at the evidence. We tried to find where was the centre of universe in terms of evidence, where was it really coming from? And we were very surprised to find a lot of it's coming out from Cardiff. So Cardiff is <laughs> cent central. Has anybody seen, has anybody seen the, um, no. World War Z? Yes. The, the, Worth seeing because it's the only time in any international blockbuster where they try to save the world from Cardiff. You know what I mean when I see it. Back in, back in 1976, there was this fabulous paper that emanated from, Car from Cardiff saying antibiotics don't work for cough, even with parallel sputum, don't use them. Lovely, pretty diagram there, demonstrating how nothing works. Last month, from Cardiff, there was another paper saying antibiotics don't work for cough, even with parallel sputum, don't use them. So this is 37 years later, and it had another pretty diagram with lots more lines on it, only this time it was digitally produced, and you can get this online, and you couldn't, you couldn't get the other one. Exactly the same. This has not changed. There's, perhaps the, the fundamental difference, and I have to say that with the NICE guide, the, the slight difference is that the, the notion that you shouldn't prescribe because it's viral is actually a nonsense. 30% of people with parallel sputum, and this goes back to 1965, where I actually do have a bacteria, but... It doesn't matter whether it's viral or bacteria, it still doesn't work. They're still going to come back in three weeks of cough because it doesn't work if it's actually uncomplicated. So we shouldn't be doing it because it doesn't work. And between, I don't know, 15 to 25% of patients will get some sort of reaction to their antibiotic. So what am I doing? I'm actually making their, their life worse in, in trying to sort of um, perhaps go along with what I believe that they want. But the reality is rather different. Last year I did a talk and we actually looked at some of the myths around, um, around self-care. So this was last year, myth-busting. There were three main ones. Everyone goes to their GP with the slightest symptom. That's the way, you know, they've got to they'll trek off their GP, don't they? Uh, and therefore, yeah, you're just holding back this horde of people. The other one is general practice is not very evidence-based, so it's dangerous to refuse antibiotics. Maybe somebody gets ill and you get in trouble for it. And also that it takes too long, exactly what was said earlier, to encourage self-care. All of those are myths. The first one is this one. It's just done itself. Um, the reality is, in any two-week period, 75% of the population... This is running itself forward. I'm sorry about this. 75% of the population will have a symptom in every two-week period. OK? So that means around... Sorry, it's, it's taking on the life of its own. Uh, that means in England, 37 million people over the last two weeks have had a symptom of some kind. And the notion that they all flock to the GP, they don't. 50% of people do nothing. 25% will go over, over the counter medicine. Some will ask the audience, some will ask, ask a friend. Um, but only 8% of people actually go to see their GP. So there's a lot of process of, this, of thought that's gone into this before people go. They don't suddenly go there. So that's busted. They have other th better things to do than going to see the GP, I would say. The other thing was around the issue of, of evidence. And the fact is people still quote this People still quote this thing from 1963, which even precedes the, um, the antibiotic evidence, that um, somehow 20% of general practice was evidence-based. The reality is that the modern, uh, a more recent study has actually suggested it's nearer 80% or above. We're an evidence-based um, 
profession now. This is not, we should not be looking back and saying, oh, we, we, there's no evidence. And nowhere is the evidence stronger than actually in respiratory tract infection. So that one's busted. The other thing, the idea that somehow it takes too long to give... To, to explain, no, it isn't. Last year, I put these treatments for each of the for cough, um, otitis media, um, and sore throat. I produce these. This is a Twitter length. It's only 140 characters or less. And if you, if you haven't got time to do that, then um, I wonder what you're doing within the surgery. It's, it's quicker to do this than it is actually to give an antibiotic. So it busted. It doesn't have to take forever to do this. So, we, but the thing that I last year when I presented this, the thing that I sorry, this is going to keep doing this. Uh, the thing that I could not present last year was how do you actually do it? Has anything been demonstrated to work? So we decided we were going to do that. We we're going to put something practical. We're going to put everything in to place to make those, and then we we're going to measure to see whether it made any difference. So last year we decided a multidisciplinary team. This involved uh, doctors, nurses, reception staff, everybody who's likely to be involved, and kept everybody involved in this process. We were going to start with the respiratory illnesses, consistent messages from everybody with evidence-based literature, and cannot emphasize enough the positive messages. People have thought about it before they come and see me. They don't want to be told, don't come and see, don't come and see me again. When we see patients, it's thank you for coming, great, marvelous, well done. You've done a really good job here. Nothing much I can do for you, but you've done a good job. What they don't want to hear is actually being told off. And that, that was something which very early on, was, that, was, that was out. That, that, that was, it, it was about positive messages throughout and about a positive discussion. The <coughs> delayed no prescribing stra strategy as introduced, uh, as suggested within the 2008, we did actually introduce because 70% of people who were given a delayed prescription will not, not actually go on to actually get that prescription. So it's almost as good as not giving one. So you don't have to have some blazing row with people over this because you can actually do something with, and where you're actually trusting the patient and empowering the patient. We went for the nice 2008, and, and again, unashamedly went for, for the, um, oops, we, we, we went for the, uh, the duration in particular, and we started from that point of view. Everyone needed to know the duration. Everybody in the practice needed to know that. Everybody, receptionists, everybody needed to know that. Um, and then we actually worked out from there. We looked at the evidence. The fact is that it, because coughs last three weeks, if you give an antibiotic, they will come back. Whether you, you know, if you don't give them an antibiotic, they're going to come back in three weeks, unless you say it's going to last three weeks. Uh, if you give an antibiotic, they will still come back in under three weeks because it hasn't worked, because it was not going to work anyway. And the evidence, it does not work. The delayed prescribing was actually a very important part of this, but also making sure that people that, that needed antibiotics actually got them. So there are, so there are some exclusions. There are people that really do need antibiotics, and we should not be denying people antibiotics. That includes people that have got various different, what I call the centaur symptoms within sore throat. There are some people that have a sore throat that do need antibiotics, and they should be getting them, and they shouldn't be just sent, sent away. What we did was actually produce a laminated sheet, which is in every single, every single surgery. It started off with this basic evidence-based messages to give to every patient, um, and telling them when they should be coming back if there's a problem, but also that little, that little twittery comment at the beginning. It's a very, very quick process. It doesn't take any time at all, but all of this is evidence-based. If you give this, if you tell patients this, you're not going to get in trouble in future if something goes wrong, because this is where the evidence is. This is the power. This is the powerful evidence. But also, th there are some people that should actually be getting them, which is the bit down at the bottom. On the, on the flip side of it, we've got the 2008 guidelines. There's a, there's a, a great um, flow diagram for people that want to look at it a little bit more and explain it to, to patients that little bit more. So it's a little bit more than that. It isn't just the basic things. Everybody in the practice was told about it. Uh, every single meeting of receptionists, doctors, nurses, every, every single group was at, it was presented <coughs> to, and everybody was emailed about it, including the cleaner, very important person in our practice. We then, what we th then wanted to do was to have the, um, the f some fact sheets. We nicked the sore throat and cough fact sheets from the self-care forum, and I reformatted them into a single page because people felt they actually wanted a single A4. Um, there wasn't one on ear infection, so I did one, did one myself. So these are all consistent messages, everybody getting exactly the same message. So, and we were able to print these off from the desktop. One of the things which I was surprised was actually very powerful. I produced this 
um, poster, which is basically, again, it's the 2008 guideline. It's a focus, very narrow focus on this. We're not going to save the whole of the world. This is about just making this happen because it's, it's good care. A remarkable the number of people who are waiting ages to see me in the, um, in, in the waiting room who then come in and say, I shouldn't be here, should I? <laughs> Um, and, it's, um, no, and the answer is no, that's fine, thank you for coming, that's fine. And we can actually go through this and have a sensible, adult, mature con conversation about this. It's the three-week cough thing, actually, I think, which people are mo most surprised. So this has actually been incredibly powerful. Every surgery, every consulting room's got it in, and every waiting room. So did it work? Well, we actually, we actually um, looked at October of last year, and... I realise I haven't got much time. Um, cough, 54% 54, 54 of people got an antibiotic for cough, 32% uh, for a general upper respiratory tract infection, which is not quite as high as, as uh, some studies have suggested elsewhere. The, the thing down the bottom is important. 41.7% of people got an antibiotic before we actually started this, this process for respiratory tract infections. January, we ran it again. So we ran it for three months. And we looked at what happened during January, and we dropped down from 41.7% down to 26.5%. It, it, we'd actually got a 15% reduction in antibiotics just within the, within, within the three months. That's what we were, were actually looking for, because that's what, that was actually what NICE is saying. We shouldn't actually be giving these. And it's a question of wh whether it actually works. So what did that actually mean in practice? That means that 67 people in January didn't get an antibiotic who might have got it in October. It made a practical difference to behaviour and has actually improved relationships with patients when we're talking about respiratory tract infections because it's held on a mature level and, and something where we can actually look at um, good, good advice. So we had 15% reduction in the use of antibiotics. 67 people per month. Now, there's a bit of a spurious argument here, but if you were to extrapolate that across a whole year, that means 800 people in our practice will not now get an antibiotic, which they didn't need in the first place, um, compared to, to last year. If you look at that across an, any other practice, if anybody wants to run this in their own practice, it's around 40 to 50 patients per 1,000 on, a patient, uh, on each patient list will actually benefit from this. It's, and it's something which is simple to do. All of, this, all of these resources are available on the self-care forum website. If you go in the, in the case studies, including the A3 poster, including the, the cut-down A4s, including the, the thing that you can turn into a laminated sheet. And in, in, I did the presentation of this in Sussex, and a lot of practices have started to take up this. I'm actually doing a presentation in Kingston next week. And I'm expecting a lot of practices. It's easy to do. And the difficult bit, which was actually preparing the whole program, has already been done for you. And we've demonstrated that it works. So this is about us getting off our backsides and getting on and doing something. Basic, no excuses. Just do it. Thank you. Thank you.